Hello you, welcome to Geekism, you join me in Planet Coaster, we're going to continue our Let's Build series. A few of you have been asking for an overview of the park, so uh, there it is, it's looking a bit like a park map, you can see how little we've actually built considering how big the space is, uh, but you, hopefully you can kind of see where we're aiming to go with the build. Uh, a couple of little green spaces up in the pirate area, still to fill, and then we're going to move around uh, into the central area. At the moment the train track just goes straight through it, that's purely to connect the train track up, eventually the train track will carry on going around the park the center area there is what we're going to be doing next which is going to be a fairy tale area uh, anyway the reason uh, i'm up here all the way up here is we have a few names to add into our hall of patrons a few very generous people have supported the channel over at patreon.com slash geekism and one of the tiers means that you get your name in the hall of patrons just like the hall of presidents at disney we have three new ones to add these have been pulled out completely randomly. Um, here's your uh, here's your name. So let's just get into here so we can edit the building. Uh, Black Dog, thank you so much for your support. You are a standing trooper. Oh, we're doing it in capsules, aren't we? Always forget that. There we go. And then over here we have how good is this? A bit random mix here. We have a robot that is going to go to Stephen. Chefchuk, I believe that's pronounced. Uh, I'll be if I spell it right. Stephen Chefchuk with a capital K at the end there. Thank you so much. And the last one is uh, Slick Falk, who I've got a half feeling I may have had it before. For some reason, this doesn't save every time. I don't get it. Uh, but there we go. Thank you very much to all of you who support and all the other patrons as well. And frankly, thank you to everyone who supports the channel in any way, even if it's just watching videos. Uh, honestly, we hit 9,000 subscribers every day and it wouldn't have been possible without you beautiful people. Uh, right, anyway, let's get cracking with this week's build. Right, so I want to um, talk a little bit this week while we uh, build some stuff about creativity and more particularly my lack of it this week. Uh, it's happened a couple of times in the last sort of six months. Occasionally I'll just sit down to play a game, whether it be this, whether it be another brick in the wall, whether it be Parkitect or any of the other games that we played in the in the past and I've had a little bit of a lack of creative juice so to speak and uh, really kind of struggled with um, with sort of ideas or just ways of, uh, of developing the build that we're, uh, that we're working on. Now, normally it wouldn't be a problem if you didn't feel like playing a creative game, you'd go and play COD or something. I'm currently quite enjoying Watch Dogs 2 and a couple of the Assassin's Creed games, but um, I'm always very aware that those sort of games won't work on this channel. Uh, this channel is all about creativity and, uh, and to an extent sort of creative simulation games as well. But basically managing and creating are kind of the, uh, the sort of key points about this channel. And although I do enjoy other games, uh, I do think it's important for a channel to have a bit of a message and a bit of a voice. And that's why I, I try and stick at least to, uh, to those types of games. So um, I always feel bad when I'm playing something that doesn't fit the demographic of the channel. And I kind of uh, end up forcing myself to play something creatively. Now, I just want to point out, first of all, that this isn't that I'm getting fed up with Planet Coaster. Uh, I still adore the game and I still have great fun playing in it when I get that spark. Uh, just occasionally, over the past six months, it's happened. It happened once before, we had a little break for a week or two. Um, and I possibly think it might be happening again now. So, uh, the video that we do today, there's no massive build. It's basically filling in gaps tidying up some places we do the queue line for the log flume and we name the log flume as well um but uh, but there's no massive build here we're getting ready we're building up to doing the big dueling uh, uh wooden hybrid coasters uh, so i'm really looking forward to doing them and i've got some loads of ideas going around in my head but i think it's a combination of a few things one i'm just getting a little bit burnt out uh, this last week or two um maybe it's a little bit sort of uh, maybe i'm getting a little bit fed up with the pirate stuff uh, it's just been, you know, it's been about sort of 15, 16 weeks we've been building in the pirate area now. Maybe getting a little bit fed up with the same two or three plants. I don't want this to sound negative though. And like I say, I'm still really enjoying building with it. I just feel like I fancy a change. So what I might do before we start the pirate coaster, I might head over to the uh, to the front area and do a little bit of work on the main street just to maybe just change things up a little bit. 
Uh, so I hope that's okay with uh, with you guys. Um, and there's a few other reasons as well. One, I've been very busy in work, so I haven't really had much time to play games. And when I have sat down, I've been quite exhausted. Uh, Creative Verse has come out as well, which I've been really enjoying, but also trying to sort of push a lot of content with that this week because it's launch. And unfortunately, when you're a, a YouTuber, you have to kind of try and white, ride the wave. So, um, so you'll have seen a few videos of that. Um, if you haven't checked it out, have a look it's really good fun we're having loads of fun in it it's basically kind of like a minecraft 2 um again it's all the the, the videos on creating in it are all about uh, building and being creative you know it's not daft stuff it's not being stupid in the game we're, we're creating stuff and making it look good whilst having fun with it as well uh, so you know if you've not checked it out go and check that out uh, also evil genius i think he's coming to an end soon i think we've got about one or two episodes in that so there's going to be a new throwback thursday series start in a week or two as well uh, so uh, thank you very much for supporting uh, this and bear with me please while I have these slight creative uh, blocks. You know, it happens to all of us. I, I know other YouTubers who play uh, creative games. I've spoke about it in the past. I know especially, uh, not especially, but particularly a few of the... Uh, the Planet Coaster YouTubers have mentioned it. I know Silverette's mentioned it in the past. Uthris and the Delay Designer. Sometimes it's just difficult to sort of be creative on demand. So really, uh, in that circumstance, rather than not putting something out, uh, I thought it'd be better to do a video like this where we just sort of go over a few areas that need tidying up, need a little bit of work, stuff I've been putting off because I've wanted to play with the new toys as with go-karts and things like that. So uh, all these little areas that need tidying up, need a bit of work, and the stuff that kind of makes the park look quite realistic as well. So I still think it's important to do it just doesn't create that big snazzy video with the big snazzy thumbnail you know new coaster new ride new house you know or whatever and um, so i hope you don't mind let me know in the comments if that's okay that we do these kind of filler videos occasionally uh, or if you'd prefer me just to have a break away from the game for a week or two whichever one you think's best uh, I'll try and go with the uh, with the majority vote there. Anyway, let's talk about what we're building here today. The first thing we've done is kind of just sort of finished off this wall area around the back of the go-karts. Uh, this is all the area that you're going to see uh, when you go on the train. So I have used some animatronics. I've been umming and ahhing about using animatronics outdoors, but in the end, I uh, I kind of went down the line that it does exist they just they may be not quite as developed as the ones in the game are you know they're normally ones that just sort of rock back and forth or something uh, but the idea with this area uh, i took a lot of inspiration from um walt disney world where there is a um a train track around the outside and it goes through like a um a, a, a um american indian settlement sort of like a native american settlement and um and they all sort of they're standing around a, uh, there's some teepees and a large fire in the middle and there's a voiceover in the train that sort of tells you a little bit about uh, about the natives and uh, and that's kind of what i wanted to do here like uh, just a simple couple of set pieces that we go past on the train like i say the animatronics are a little bit too developed for it really it should just be sort of things that sort of rock back and forth or move a hand back and forth or something uh, whereas here the animatronics frankly would be the best animatronics in the world if they exist in real life because they're basically just uh you know completely animated figures <laughs> you know their movement is is fantastic although i've been watching a video of the new disney area uh, that they've opened up at animal kingdom the pandora area based on avatar and the uh, the animatronics in that look absolutely stunning i mean i mean film quality animatronics they really are uh, here's an interesting idea a couple of pirates here if you notice all the build i've done up here was all the red coat so it's meant to be the last sort of red coat bastion against the pirates but they've just started encroaching in they've come in and they've took out this red coat uh, and uh, he's on the floor and you can tell he's been done in because he's got a big pool of blood underneath him using <laughs> maybe a bit graphic i don't know <laughs> uh, but we use that awesome splat sign there to um to make a pool of blood and it looks like they're just sort of approaching the area i've always liked the idea of uh, these little set pieces telling a bit of a story you know nothing too specific just a bit of a general sort of idea of what's going on we name the ride dead man's tail there were some really fantastic suggestions for this ride by the way name wise um this one sort of stuck out at me uh, I'm not too sure why really, there were some really great ones that were a bit more specific about what actually happened in the ride, like there was uh, uh, the battle for Kraken Bay and things like that, but I always quite like the idea of having the Kraken as a bit of a surprise later on in the ride, so I wanted to go something a little bit more generic, and this one has a bit of a theme, uh, you know, it, feel, it feels a little bit like sort of Pirates of the Caribbean, it's quite a general term for a pirate ride overall. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean has a fantastic par uh, parrot animatronic on the way in, chatting to people. This is my 
sort of homage to that using one of the uh, one of the lookouts pirates i can imagine him sort of standing there and chatting to people as they come in oh welcome aboard i've asked you sailors and all this sort of stuff there's my pirate voice for you <laughs> uh, so we add a little bit of a sign there and then we come on and uh, finish off most of the video now is the interior of this queue one thing that uh, a couple of people have mentioned is that um, please try and not move, it's a perfect example, please try and not move the camera too much while you're building. I have been trying to do that, it's very difficult to do when you're building interiors, when you're building inside, I don't know why I said interiors so weird, uh, when you're building interiors, when you're building something inside a building, uh, it really makes it tricky to keep the camera still. You have to use the T button to transfer between the two different camera styles all the time, you have to constantly keep tipping things around make sure like there to make sure his legs aren't sticking out and things like that so I'm trying my best to keep the camera still although it is tricky doubly so when you're trying to build inside like this here um, I needed to, I just want to do a little bit of a set piece here on the way out so again these uh, lookout pirates are really great and um, I had to put that cage at the bottom there the box at the bottom to cover up some of the gubbins from the outside side I don't think it looks too bad once it's finished it looks maybe a little harder that it's just kind of sitting there but it's a technique we've used a couple of times now and I imagine it's you know it's the sort of technique they would use in a theme park as well uh, if you can't get rid of it you just sort of cover it up and sort of make it go in the uh, in the background one of the things that they do a lot in uh, Disney and uh, another highly theme parks like Universal is things like speakers things like um, signage and stuff they're all tied in you know if you can't if you can't get rid of them completely you hide them by decorating them in the same style so that's kind of my uh, my excuse <laughs> basically for having to have that box there so it's time to work on the queue I wanted to do a, um, a, a, a custom queue something I'm quite enjoying doing at the minute actually making custom queues basically making a uh, a, a block piece that fits on the 4x4 grid and then uh, and then just sort of repeating it around and uh, I think it just gives you a bit more uh, sort of a uh, bit more say in how it looks and uh, and you can just sort of do a lot more with it so I'm quite happy with how this turned out using the new rope pieces and um, and pillars what I do here is fill the whole thing in and then go through and delete the pillar, pillars where appropriate to make it look um, like it makes more sense. So at the moment it's easy just to sort of copy and paste them all around. Uh, make sure that I don't have any rope going across the paths. It's quite tricky to do. I think I did do it there actually. I think I need to go back and adjust that. Again, apologies for the camera whizzing around. It's, it's so hard to do when you're underground, it really is. Uh, or under a, under a roof like we are here. Uh, talking to the roof, I think the roof needs a little bit more detail. I'm thinking that it needs some beams that sort of match the beams that are going up here. Uh, I don't do that in this video though, but I think it does need doing. It's something I'm probably going to go back at doing uh, at a later date. But saying that, I probably will do it off camera because um, it, it's really fiddly to look up and build stuff in this game. <laughs> as I'm sure anyone who's uh, tried to do it themselves will agree. So here we go, we're going to uh, take off the pillars there. So the pillars just on the corner. Remove that from the, uh, the building and then copy it around using the modern wood here for a bit of a change uh, it's one of the uh, one of the nice smooth pieces I actually think it looks really nice I think it looks like a uh, really much like a dock or decking bit of wood you know uh, the ha there is new patterns for the path that gives a nice wood texture but I didn't want that the very thin gaps you get in between path I wanted it to be all one piece that was just uh, uh, sort of sectioned off with rope finish off the interior of this building here it's nothing fancy it's really kind of just sort of filling the space like I say I wasn't feeling the most creative this week so a lot of this is filling the space and it it may also be stuff that I end up going back to having a play around with uh, one thing I do need to do with the log flume there is a little bit of the ride inside that still needs finishing uh, but then it also needs what I've sort of coined a, uh, a lighting and sound pass or a sound and lighting pass so I'll have to go through uh, sort out all the lighting through the ride, turn, turn the lights off in the in the world, you know, make it dark in the world, do all the lighting through the ride, and then also all the sound through the ride as well. While we've been building it, obviously we're using background music. Uh, oh, that's another thing about background music. We have been using Planet Coaster until recently. I've uh, set up an account with Epidemic Sound. So uh, hopefully you appreciate the, the variation in background music. You'll have to let me know what you think of that in the comments as well. Uh, yeah, so we go through the ride, obviously we've been using background music here, but the ride itself needs music, so that when we do a POV, that hopefully we'll be able to do this week or next week, uh, you'll get the music and you'll get a full experience of what the ride should be. Uh, so when I do the uh, the sound and lighting pass on this, I'll probably go back over a few of these bits here where it's 
I don't know, just a bit funky. Like this building here, just you know, I, I love the weeds and the and the ivy and stuff. I just think it needs to have another little pass just to sort of neaten it up a little bit, make it look a bit more uh, real, I guess. The other problem here we've got is we are in we're an interior building, uh, but it's not underground, so it's going to be light. So I can't just sort of make it dark and make the walls disappear. So I've kind of just accepted the fact that we're going to be able to see stucco. Um, but again, any suggestions what we could do there? Uh, let me know. So again, just sort of finishing this building around as well. This is kind of like the station platform, I guess you would call it. I could do with a door on there somewhere, because that's where the uh, sort of the control booth of the uh, of the ride would be really. Mm. Might end up. Oh, excuse me, I keep yawning. Might end up moving that um, that barrel thing down somewhere instead. Hmm, not sure. Uh, yeah, station itself. Uh, didn't want to do too much here, just kind of wanted to tie it in with the rest of the building. So we're going to use some of the uh, the castle wall pieces there, breaking a few of them away from the building so that we can squeeze them into odd areas, like so. And then uh, one thing, I need to start doing this, I need to go back to the western area and do this as well, is actually sort of tying in the... Uh, the the queue entrance and exit areas with the ride a little bit because now with the no collision uh, one of the things you can do is basically cover them up there you go look at that so you can cover them up with wood um you can cover them up with uh, with all sorts really so we've done it on the whirly gig on the way in using some barrels and we're doing it here on this one on the way and to the actual station platform using bits of wood and it just sort of ties them in and makes them look a little bit sort of built into the area. Uh, last thing we do here then is add a bit of greenery. So like I say, I'm not too sure... Oh, you can have a look at me uh, desktop for a second there as well. I'm not too sure what to do. Well, I say not too sure what to do, I've done it. But uh, I wasn't really 100% happy with the idea that this was built indoors, but then we were also sort of making it look outdoors, if that makes sense. So... But at the end of the day, I had to sort of box it off in the end, and I, I'm kind of happy. It looks good. It just, you know, there's something a little bit peculiar about the fact that we're indoors, but there's plants and things. So I, I don't know if we can maybe think of a better way of doing it. Uh, I might have a go. Maybe using some of the rope and stuff as vines and making it really overgrown, so we can't actually see the ceiling and things like that. You know, maybe actually have sort of planting and things coming from the ceiling, so it looks like a really overgrown, almost like a jungle. Uh, I'm not sure. Any suggestions, uh, please pop them down in the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this because, like I say, a bit of a creative block this week, struggling to kind of cap off the area. Um, from the outside, we still need to do some work on the outside there, that hill and the area around the back of it. Again, just it just needs loads of foliage. Um, that'll uh, probably happen in the next video or two. Uh, yeah, so here, I didn't want to do too much because you've kind of, you've seen the last set piece of the ride, which is where um, Captain Lockjaw is sort of standing with all his treasure. So I didn't want to do loads here, but I felt that it needs something more than just bushes. So we've just got a, a little bit of treasure. And also, you'd probably be able to see that from the queue and from the station as well. So it's just a generic sort of set piece as opposed to being anything in particular to do with the ride. Uh, this whole area, really, I'm treating as the station, even though the station block is only a small area to the left. Kind of just treating all of this as, as station area. So there's stuff to look at if you're waiting to get off, but as far as... You're concerned the ride is finished. There we go. Capping this area off with some uh, some windows. Yeah, I think I might go back and, and just sort of edit, make it a little bit more jungly in here. I think that might be a good idea. Um, but yeah, looking at these plans, I think this is one of the reasons why I'm getting a little bit burnt out at the moment. It's just because, you know, pirates, we have three plants. And you could use others, I think, but I kind of set myself to really sort of use this theme specifically. And... These are the ones that jump out at me as, uh, as piracy. Uh, we have used a few others in, in, in other areas of the pirates zone, but for the most part, it's uh, it's going to be those sort of banana leaves and palms. Uh, but kind of happy with how it all looks. I just uh, I feel like building with something different, you know. Uh, stick a fountain in here. I wasn't sure what to do with it. I was just going to sort of stack up some barrels and cargo again like we've done everywhere else but i thought no we'll do a fountain we haven't used that awesome uh, fountain topper yet with the ship on i thought this would be a better place as any to use it since this is a water ride it's got a you know nautical themed and uh, i think it works out really quite nice actually and sort of uh, lightens up the area a bit because um the area is quite dark and that sort of nice white limestone really sort of uh, makes the area pop Right, uh, finishing off a few little bits with some leaf, not too much. Need to do something with that hill. I was looking for some pieces maybe to stick on it. Couldn't really, nothing really jumped out at me. 
possibly a little water feature maybe uh, I'm not too sure maybe you know a little stream coming down the side of it I'm gonna have a little play with that see if I can find something suitable uh, we need to cap this area off with uh, just a bit of shipwreck a bit of debris and uh, and just to cap these areas in accidentally click an oak <laughs> finish off with a few more palms and uh, and there he, there we have it right let's have a good uh, good look over it then so there we go we started off at filling out the top of the train track there we saw the cool uh, red coats animatronics we haven't really used much yet and we also did another little area there just to finish off the go-karts and a little service area around the back at uh, the front here we've not done much other than the sign but I thought it would be good to have a good overview of it with the sign in place dead man's tail thank you very much in the comments for the suggestion and here we can see people queuing up and filling up the rides there we go we'll slow it down a little bit so it looks a bit more realistic there you go and there uh, and there's another one, a better view as well. Right, thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, you can give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries or suggestions, pop them down in the comments. And if you fancy a chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at Sparrow. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.